Hey, it's Phil from Euroheat, and today I want to tell you about some of the common mistakes that are made with heat pumps. And the reason I want to tell you this is so that you can avoid making the same mistakes. Because unfortunately, we do see a lot of failed installations or poor performing installations where people invest a lot of money into having a heat pump because they're not cheap and they expect a really great result but unfortunately they're let down and I see a lot of finger pointing happening uh, when we go to help and unfortunately a lot of people blame the manufacturer but nine times out of ten or even 9.99 times out of ten it's not the manufacturer's fault the heat pump is working exactly as it should it's the fault of the installation and usually this can be attributed to the contractor unfortunately. The first one is that heat pumps, uh, people try to stuff them into corners and it's the same thing with air conditioning systems to be honest. The air to water heat pumps, they harvest the heat from the air and they need a fresh supply of air to harvest the heat from. What we see a lot of the time is someone will install a heat pump, so this is the house, they put the heat pump here and the fence is right here and it's just blowing this cold air, this discharge air that it's, the heat pump's already stripped all the heat out of, not all of the heat but it's already stripped heat out of, it just hits this fence or this brick wall or whatever it is and then it just gets sucked back in to the heat pump again. And what that means is Sure, the heat pump can keep working, it's still, there's a lot of energy in that air, but it's harder for the heat pump to uh, extract that heat. So that means that the running cost is higher, so you're paying more every hour that it's running. And also, it has to work harder, it starts thinking, geez, it's getting colder out here, even though it's not, it's only cold in that little pocket. And so, it starts ramping up the compressor and the fan, and it starts basically working harder and harder. And that means that Unfortunately, it's working really hard when it doesn't have to. So in addition to it costing more per hour, the lifespan of your heat pump is getting reduced because it's working so hard, it's just absolutely getting pumped. So that's the first tip. Make sure your heat pump can breathe. So behind me, you can see it's backing onto a, one wall of this house where there is a heat pump installed and it's just blowing out into the garden and there's nothing in its way for about four meters which is great it's got the discharge area has got lots of room to dissipate disappear mix with the other air or go away um, and the wind can take it away and it can um, bring in fresh air which has still the heat in it at the ambient temperature outside which might be 15 degrees or 10 degrees but if it hits the wall and gets sucked back in instead of let's say 10 degree air temperature it might be coming back at five degrees so it's much harder for it to extract that heat. Now the second uh, common mistake is contractors tend to treat and even some engineers I see tend to treat heat pumps like the old school gas boilers where there was only a marginal efficiency drop between having let's say 55 degree water and 35 degree water it wasn't that much of a difference so it didn't really matter but with heat pumps it makes a massive difference what the um, not in the air temperature like we just talked about, but what the water temperature that it's producing is. So it's much easier for the heat pump to produce 30 or 35 degree water than it is 50 or 55 degree water. And when I say much easier, I mean the COP, the efficiency, might be let's say 500% at uh, 35 degree water if it's a good heat pump and a um, good, a well-designed system which can utilize that 35 degree water but when it goes up to let's say 55 degree water that efficiency that COP might drop to say 2.5 250% so that's a huge difference in the in the efficiency and therefore the running economy so you are paying more each every each and every hour and then the heat pump is also working harder so again the longevity, the lifespan of the heat pump is being slightly diminished each time it runs in this manner. To avoid this, make sure that you have a low temperature heating system. So for floor heating, it should be 30 to 35 degree water. Ideally, it's actually modulating all of the time according to the internal temperature and the exter external temperature. And so we uh, make sure that our systems do this and that means that, sure, it. Uh, you know, instead of just having a classic system where you know people um, set it to 50 or 45 degrees 
First of all, our systems are designed to work on 35 degrees, plus sometimes it might only need 27 or 25 degrees. And I know that, doesn't, that sounds a bit weird, right? But if it's warm enough inside and we only need to add a little bit of energy and it's actually not that cold outside, then that 25 degrees can be plenty to maintain the comfort in the house. But this massively uh, increases the energy efficiency of the unit. So your running costs are really low. Now, the third uh, mistake that we see is people, and this has two parts. Part A of this third mistake is people think a heat pump's a heat pump, I'm just gonna get the cheapest one. And I understand why people do that, right? Because it costs less to start off with and there can be a big difference between one of the sort of cheaper heat pumps and a mid-tier heat pump and a premium heat pump. But uh, I would, from all of our experience, I can tell you that there is quite a big difference between the, the lower grade ones, uh, which are just sort of slapped together on the cheap, oh, sorry, that's a bit mean to say. You know, they're made in factories and they pump out a lot of them, but they're just made basically to, you know, satisfy being a heat pump. There's not much love and care and attention paid to it. And uh, they don't perform that well. So they're loud, they're um, not energy efficient, uh, so the running cost is high and then the longevity of the unit can be quite short, let's say five years. So you're paying the sum of money and it's not, it's less than the other ones, but it's still quite a chunk of money and then it only lasts five years. So what do you do? You can either buy the same thing again and hope for another five years or you buy one of the mid-tier or the premium heat pumps and sure that will last you but now you've in total you've overpaid for the system so I would recommend staying away from the the bottom tier heat pumps and going either for, for the mid-tier which is uh, the sort of names that you might recognize from air conditioning or household appliances things like that or the premium um, brands which usually let's say are German or Scandinavian something like that now part B of this uh, third common mistake is that people assume that if I get an um, efficient heat pump, if I get one of these German or Scandinav Scandinavian heat pumps, it doesn't matter who installs it, it's going to work efficiently, it's going to be great. And I can tell you that that is just completely not true. Because as you've just heard before, there's, they're just two common mistakes and I can rattle off about 15, right? But I always get told I talk too much about the physics and you know, I, I rabbit on. So I'll um, keep it short and simple here. But you can have two identical houses next to each other. So they have the same heat load. You can have two of the same heat pumps. So the, the, you know, the, let's say the engine, the machine is the same. But then what happens inside, that determines how well the machine is going to perform. So it's sort of like, I guess if you had uh, a car with uh, perfectly round tires, right? And then you had another car which had hexagon shaped tires. So sure, the hexagon tires are still gonna work, but it's not gonna be a smooth ride and it's gonna be harder for the engine. The engine has to work harder to make it happen. And so I've seen premium heat pumps uh, or, you know, with bang geothermal systems, which we love by the way, but we've seen um, air, air to water heat pumps, you know, Scandinavian, German brands that are working at the same level of efficiency as one of the low tier heat pumps. So one of the cheap ones. So I'm talking in the order of, let's say COP of three. From my perspective, it's not worthwhile then to have that, you know, beautiful piece of machinery that is made to work so well, but it's not complemented by the other stuff, which also needs to work well because the whole, the whole system is only as good as its weakest link. And so if something on the inside, the floor heating loops or the design or um, the heat loads or the radiators, you know, the flow rates, the temperatures, you know, there's 20 different factors. If some of them or even one of them are off, it can dramatically lower the performance of the heat pump and then, you know, nobody's happy at the end of the day because it still costs a lot to run. It might um, have other issues because the top tier heat pumps are pretty smart so they know when something's wrong so they might start throwing out errors all the time and people start blaming the manufacturers of the heat pump whereas the heat pump actually is doing the right thing and it's just everything else every other part of the system is not great and so it's really struggling because of that so make sure that you get if you get a mid-tier or a top tier heat pump that it's complemented by 
the correct system inside. And the best way to do this is to find a contractor or an engineer, or if uh, you're like Euroheat, engineers and contractors bundled into one um, that has a lot of experience and can guarantee that the system is going to work well. And anybody can say they guarantee it. But the best way to find out is to look at their past jobs. If you can, try and talk to some of the past customers. But ask them the important questions. What is the design water temperature of the system? And if it's, let's say, for floor heating, if it's not 30 to 35 degrees, if it's 45 or 50 degrees, red flag. If uh, the, for radiators, it's let's say it's 60 or 65 degrees, red flag, alarm bells, right? And if they don't know what the noise uh, rating is, that's another giveaway. And if they don't really care about where the heat pump's gonna be positioned, if they don't mind putting it in a corner somewhere where it's just gonna struggle, that's another red flag. So make sure that you choose the right contractor. They might cost a little bit more than you know the contractors that are out there doing everything they can to try and win the job by lowering the price, which then you know, means they have to cut corners or not use the right materials or not spend the time and attention that's required on the system. Because the hydronic heating systems aren't cheap, let's be honest, that they are pretty expensive. Make sure that you find the right person that is going to give you the result that you're looking for. And if you're looking for someone to provide that result for you, um, at Euroheat, we've been designing and installing hydronic heating and cooling systems for over 30 years, um, air to water heat pumps and geothermal heat pumps for over 20 years. And we would love to make your home or building really comfortable and energy efficient too.